everyone, David here. So a new episode of The Walking Dead was on last night. I watched it, it was called The Next World, and there will be spoilers in this video if you are new to this. So if you're still watching, you haven't seen the episode, I don't know what's wrong with you. But I'm going to be talking about the episode in depth. Well, not fully in depth, but I'm going to tackle the big things that are are worth pointing out in this episode. So if you haven't seen the episode, hopefully you're gone by now. So anyways... Let me point something out about this episode from the get-go that was apparent during the opening scene that I kind of have a slight issue with that is not so much an issue that I have with the episode itself as it is the placement of the episode. I was expecting this week's episode to be a slower one because of how adrenaline-fueled the last one was because that's just how The Walking Dead works. And it was a tad bit slower, but it was still a very good episode filled with great things about it. But the one thing that was just very daunting and very off about the pacing and the consistency of the season is the fact that this episode opens with a time jump. As soon as we see that shot of the the picture frame or, or the framed photo of Carl holding baby Judith already with the eye patch, it, it, it immediately signifies that we just had a time jump of like a month or two because obviously that's the only way that they can be you know happy with their lives Carl's happy with him only having one eye like nothing happened Michonne is coming out of the shower with her towel head and Rick is listening to one of my favorite songs of all time more than a feeling by Boston while he's getting ready to head out with Daryl that can only mean that we there has been some time since the last week's episode and that is very tonally inconsistent because last week we saw a whole family get eaten and killed within a span of five minutes. Carl loses his eye and this week, oh, they're all, you know, fun and happy and stuff like that months later. And the reason why I have an issue with that is because this should have been the mid-season premiere. As soon as the episode ended, this should have been the mid-season premiere. And last week's episode should have been the mid-season finale. A lot of people were disappointed with how the first half of the season ended with fucking Sam like, Mom? Mom? They should have put last week's episode in as that finale. That would have ended that first half of the season with a bang. It would have been epic. And then this week's episode, that time jump would have felt way more comfortable. I would have felt... Uh, I'm more comfortable with the fact that months have passed and everybody is e eased up with their situation. And like I said, you know, Carl's good with just having one eye. Rick is over Jesse's death. And trust me, he's over Jesse's death by the end of this episode. But that would have made much more sense if there was a actual monthly gap of two months to go along with it so that we would have felt with it. So coming off of just one week after last week's episode it just uh, certain things in this episode just felt kind of off now with that being said let me just talk about the things that didn't work in this episode briefly which is most of the stuff that did feel quite filler just like the walking dead tends to do and what i was fully expecting the entire episode to, to uh, this week's episode to be because of how last week's episode was just so action-packed I was expecting this episode to be fully filler and only about a third of it was filler and pretty much everything with Carl, Enid, uh, Spencer and um, and um, shown out in the woods was to me that filler material especially the stuff between Carl and Enid them reading comic books and she's like oh I want to leave and like Okay, and then you just see them walking through the woods more and more. That, I just kept checking the time. I literally was checking the time, checking my email, seeing if I got a text or something like that. Every time those scenes came up. And out of the two out of the two pairs, the stuff with Spencer and Michonne was just a, t a tad bit more interested because they dealt with some drama that uh, I was kind of looking forward to see how it, it paid off with him carrying the shovel and whatnot. And then finally, we get the revelation that kind of, within the episode connects everything and I and I mean connect the episode because uh, this one thing is similar to how tonally different this episode feels to last, week, last week's episode which within the episode it worked but you know connecting to last week's it felt off because we are just a week apart from having a very uh, very dark and grim episode with a lot of death and a lot of uh, traumatic events and then we got this episode that feels like Borderlands because uh, honestly by the end of the episode I thought like this felt like a western this legitimately felt like the walking uh, the western version of the walking dead they, they even have some musical cues here and there where you hear like you know the guitar from from western movies 
Uh, but anyways, the one thing that tied the, the stories of Car Carl Enid, Michonne, and Spencer out in the woods is the fact that Deanna is actually still roaming the woods as a walker. That's why Spencer's going out there to kind of put her down and kind of give, give himself closure by giving her a proper burial, all that. And that kind of does lead to a tender moment with Carl, who also came uh, across Deanna. And I, know, I knew there was something fishy when they weren't showing that walker's face. Whenever they do that, that means that that walker is probably like a past uh, character. And so that kind of gave them a tender moment between uh, Carl, uh, Judith, and Michonne there in the porch at the end of the episode. But the one thing that bothers me, that kind of breaks this whole thing apart, is the fact that the last we saw of Deanna was in that room being uh, overrun by a hallway full of walkers. And The Walking Dead has done this a couple of times where a character is overrun by a horde of walkers and then later on, either in the next episode or in the following, or, or later in that very same episode, we see that character walking around as a zombie, as a walker hit him or herself. That, to me, makes no sense because when you're overrun by walkers who want to eat you, they typically eat you. There shouldn't be, sorry, there shouldn't be a, a body reanimated walking around. It just doesn't make any sense. The only way to actually end up being a walker is if you get bitten, you get away, but you manage to turn, no, nobody puts you down. So you turn and you become a walker. Or you get killed by a gunshot or a stabbing, but the brain is still intact. You die, you turn into a walker. Okay. But when you're overrun by a horde of zombies, those zombies naturally tear you apart. So that was what I was, uh, that was the impression I was left with at, in the mid-season finale that Deanna was actually eaten. You know, you see her like scream like, ah, like that. Like she was just giving herself over to the walkers. And she should have been torn to pieces, but now she's walking around in the woods? That, to me, just did not make any sense, which is why it kind of discredits that entire thing. So, anyways, besides all all that stuff that I had issues with, let's get on with, in my opinion, the big highlight of this episode. Jesus finally gets introduced into The Walking Dead TV show by having Rick and Daryl hunt him down after he swindled them for supplies and food that they were after. And this was the best way to introduce introduce this character who's, uh, who, who I can already tell I'm going to like because he's colorful, he's witty, he, he's very smart, and he is very much different to the show. And because they introduced this character that's totally different, the episode needed to be totally different, which within the episode it worked. This episode has more humor than the past three seasons of The Walking Dead combined. I swear to God. Because the first opening five minutes, like I said, you got this, you know, casual banter between Michonne, Rick, and, and Carl there in the, in, the, in the house. And then later you got Rick popping in a CD and I was like, no, Daryl's like, don't. Just don't. And he starts singing along, something that you have not seen Rick do in a while. And like I said, th this humor and this tone of this western vibe that Jesus brought to the episode and with these two characters hunting him down and, and kind of having like this standoff with them, that was refreshing to see and it worked within the episode, but it's just a little weird coming off of last week's episode where we had all that death and all that carnage to this. And what also made Jesus very different is the fact that this is probably the first character who is able to steal supplies from Rick and Daryl without ever threatening their lives or pulling a gun out at them. Even Rick recognizes this and he's like, did he ever pull a weapon on you? And Daryl's like, yeah, okay, fine. And so that already makes me, uh, makes the character win me over and uh, seeing to how he reacts when he wakes up in Alexandria. And so the introduction of Jesus and the way he had great chemistry with Daryl and Rick really, really worked. And just like I said, the overall tone and the overall adventure of them trying to hunt him down was really fun to see. And this led up to Rick and Michonne hooking it up at the end of this episode. I mean, that, that was... It, it's funny because a major comic book character, a character from the Walking Dead comics gets introduced and the big thing that everybody's talking about is the magic swirl team that is, that is Rick and Michonne at the end of this episode, which a lot of people were hoping to see at some point. And I wasn't like pushing for it, but I was very happy to see it because you got these two tortured souls finally finding some kind of comfort within each other. And I'm, I'm excited to see how Jesus plays out within the team, within Alexandria, and what he's going to lead them to, uh, lead uh, the group of uh, the people of Alexandria to, and how Rick and Michonne are going to deal with their newfound intimacy. 
So overall, a great episode. Did have some filler moments that we could have done without, but they needed to put them in there because it is The Walking Dead. And sure, within the episode, the tone and the revelation of Deanna did connect things together, but it just it did have some inconsistency issues with previous episodes, especially because of how they placed this episode right after the mid-season premiere, which should have been the mid-season finale. So I give The Next World a solid 8 out of 10. So let me know what you guys thought of this week's episode of The Walking Dead, and I'll see you guys next time.